a lady in her mid-thirties was murdered in New York's catastrophic storm when she was carried away in her home while attempting to save her dog from biblical flash floods. The tremendous downpour caused tens of millions of dollars in damage, washed away people's goods, destroyed local infrastructure, and turned the state into a war zone as search parties urgently assisted trapped families throughout the night. As many as eight inches of rain fell at the storm's epicenter, Hudson Valley, New York, on Sunday, prompting the state of emergency to be proclaimed in several cities and counties. Due to the flooding, some bridges have fallen and highways are unusable. All hands on deck, according to New York State Police Trooper Stephen V. Navel, as the search continues into the early hours of Monday. Federal weather forecasters in New York City issued an extremely uncommon red weather warning for the boroughs of Manhattan, Queens, and the Bronx. In anticipation of floods, occupants in the basement were urged to find higher ground for the night. West Point, the site of the U.S. Military Academy, was overrun by floodwaters that turned roadways into rivers and flooded residential areas, resulting in the death of one lady. As state officials claim that highways in Orange County, New York, were inaccessible, videos and pictures revealed flooded roadways, including Thay Road that led to the military post. The governor, Kathy Hartchell remarked that the volume of water was exceptional. The downpour that pounded the East Coast for the most of Sunday has left commuters stuck. Due to the weather, Amtrak trains between New York City and Albany were put on hold. The weather on Sunday has caused more than 1,500 flights out of New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia airports to be delayed. As rain pours throughout the country, areas from North Carolina to the Northeast are under watches and warnings. The hardest hit areas include New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and the remainder of New England. Orange County, New York, County Executive Steve Newhouse proclaimed a state of emergency. On Sunday night, the town of Cornwall, which is located on the western bank of the Hudson River, also proclaimed a state of emergency. The settlement of Highland Falls, next to West Point, was described by Newhouse as an absolute war zone. He continued, It's a horrible situation. Plenty of people are trying to battle their way in to help us, anticipating that repairs to rectify the massive water damage would take months. Vital infrastructure and residences were wiped away, according to State Senator James Scoofis, during the disastrous weather storm. Six hikers had to be evacuated from the nearby, flooded area, as well as scores of cars who got trapped in the heavy downpours, according to Rockland County Executive Ed Day. Day said that 40 persons were extricated from their vehicles at the Long Mountain Circle near the top of the Palisades Parkway by the fire departments of Orange and Rockland counties. Cornwall and Hudson resident Rosemary Wilcom remarked of the damage to her house. It took our fences down. Our basement was six inches underwater all the way up to the den. It puts our entire property at risk.
the adult male who was trapped in his home by rushing flood water was freed, according to the Pyrmont Fire Department in Stony Point, with the aid of their underwater rescue teams. A wheelchair-bound girl and a family that had become caught in floodwaters in a park were freed by gallant rescuers. The town's marine force was subsequently sent out once more, and it successfully brought the victims back to shore. People in the impacted region still face a challenging 48 hours, according to Hartchell. The oldest of the five American service academies, West Point in New York, which was flooded, prepares cadets for commissioning into the U.S. Army and has about 4,200 pupils. Due to eight inches of rain pouring in a matter of hours on Sunday, the little hamlet was made the center of the flooding catastrophe. Locals were alarmed by the scene, which prompted a number of social media posts. A local tweeted a photo of Thayer Road with the stern instruction, Find High Ground. In another video from the West Point area, a road outside the Grant housing section of the military complex was entirely covered in murky rainfall, and a car became stranded in the middle. In the relentless downpour, many individuals could be seen standing knee-deep in the water, attempting to push the vehicle out of Hom's path. Near the military post, the roads were inundated with so much rain that water and down the street like a river, carrying garbage cans and other small things with it. People were forced to leave their houses in Stony Point, further down the Hudson from West Point, because of the heavy rains. Homes and roads in the neighborhood have been completely inundated. Significant flooding in Stony Point affected both houses and automobiles, and several residents were forced to leave. All of our first responders at the site deserve our gratitude. Stay off the roads, since there is still a flash flood warning in effect, and the roads have been inundated and washed away. The New York communities of Curious Joel, New City, Woodbury, West Point, and Cold Spring should anticipate up to 3.5 inches of rain each hour. In New York State, the inclement weather has also significantly disrupted rail service. At 2.50 p.m. Robert boarded the train from Poughkeepsie to Grand Central, but the two-out trip took four. Due to the excessive rain, boulders are presently obstructing both directions of the tracks, leaving the train trapped in the midst of its route. The crew has also stated that they are unsure of when they would be able to resume normal operations. Some individuals are terrified, Robert stated. People are mostly remaining calm. Water was being distributed by railway staff at first, but now they are out, and there is no food or power available. They don't have a strategy, he said, and they were going to send buses to come find us but they can't since the roads are flooded. It's an absolute s asterisk asterisk t show, because there is no air conditioning on board. Train employees momentarily allow the passengers to disembark so they may stand on the side of the tracks in the rain. It's so hot in there, Robert complained, that they let us go off the train and onto the tracks for some fresh air. 
The National Weather Service reported that a slow-moving cold front would approach Sunday evening with more intense thunderstorms and heavy rain that might linger for several days ranging from the northeast through North Carolina. Flights are already being impacted by the weather. As of Sunday afternoon, 1,355 flights into or out of the U.S. have been cancelled. According to FlightAware, 190 flights out of Newark, 150 flights out of John F. Kennedy, and 250 flights out of LaGuardia, New York, have been cancelled. 115 flights have been cancelled and 170 delayed in Boston, while 107 flights have been cancelled and 161 delayed in Philadelphia. It occurs only two days after storms that tore over the East Coast caused mudslides in Vermont and flooding in Northern Virginia, where many drivers had to be rescued after navigating flooded roadways in Pentagon City. More severe weather is now expected, and 80 million people from Washington to Portland, Maine, may see a month's worth of rain in a matter of hours, according to projections cited by Bloomberg. The flood watch is in effect for the majority of the major cities along Interstate 95, including Washington, Philadelphia, and New York. Other East Coast cities may also be severely impacted by the storms and may experience catastrophic flooding. These places include Hartford and New Haven in Connecticut, Hatteras in North Carolina, Norfolk in Virginia, Binghamton in New York, and others. The storm is moving so slowly. According to Brian Ramsey of the National Weather Service in Upton, New York, that accumulations may build up in locations that are more severely affected. He said that rain might fall in New York at a pace of two inches per hour through early Monday. Governor Kathy Hartchell of New York stated in a statement that residents of the city should be ready for floods. Parts of the state will continue to be at risk for flooding from storms bringing heavy rain throughout the weekend, especially in those regions that have already been severely affected by rainfall and flooding over the previous couple of days. But the East Coast, most of which is still wet from the previous series of storms, is predicted to have severe weather from coast to coast. The I-95 corridor will have very severe rains, according to Andrew Orison, a forecaster with the U.S. Weather Prediction Center. Since this area has been generally wet, we are expecting significant impacts. Last week, there were several water rescues in northern Virginia as a result of cars venturing into high flood waters that had flooded the streets of Pentagon City. Along S. Joy Street between Army Navy Drive and Columbia Pike, at least three automobiles became caught in high water leaving a number of individuals stranded, including an older person with impairments, either in their cars or on the median. According to one report, the water level was so high that at least one of the automobiles seemed to be floating. There were no reported injuries when everyone was rescued from the sea. Mudslides were also reported in Vermont's central region, forcing authorities to restrict at least one major route near Killington. The main east-west route in the area, U.S. Route 4 was covered with about 20 feet of debris on Friday afternoon, according to WCVB. Jim Hath, a member of the Killington Select Board, 
compared the flooding to Irene, the 2011 tropical cyclone that flooded sections of New England, including Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Approximately 1 to 2 inches of rain are predicted to fall in the area until Tuesday. However, the Northeast and New England are predicted to have the largest totals. The Hudson Valley in New York, Albany, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire could receive 2 to 3 inches of rain farthernest. Additionally, between 3 and 5 inches of rain may fall in certain regions. With highs in the mid 90s, near to breaking or tying records for the Florida Peninsula, states in the South, including Florida and Texas, continue to bake in the sun. According to the National Weather Service, South Florida will see heat indices in the 105 to 110 degree range due to the combination of these extreme temperatures and excessive humidity.